Hello everyone and welcome to your first Ruby programming tutorial here at Ruby Rocks U. I'm Wesley Porter and in this tutorial we're just going to learn how to create our first Ruby program. So you're probably wondering why we had to go through all that work of installing Eclipse and getting it all set up with a plugin. Now an IDE is something that's very convenient for us. And in this tutorial, we're just going to go through a couple of ways to create and run our programs. And one of those ways is with the very first program that we installed. If you go into All Programs, go down to Ruby, and you'll see that we have Interactive Ruby here. This Interactive Ruby is basically a command prompt. And here you can put in any kinds of Ruby statements that you'd like we can do put s, which is like print line, and create our classic hello world example, and hit enter. So you'll see that it gave us our output, hello world. We're not going to go into too much detail of what this is all doing so far, or exactly what all this programming is, or what it means, but we'll go into that later. You can also do any kinds of mathematical equations in here, like 8 times 7. And we can even create a class, if you're familiar with that. If not, don't worry about what this means too much. It's just a real-world example. So we can create a class of dog. We will give that dog a method or characteristic of speak. We'll define that method, what it does, give it a put s, and whoop. We'll just end that method, and then end the class. So we're done with our class. Our class is ready. We can now start making lots of dogs. One of my favorite dogs was Blue when I was a kid. So we'll just make him. Blue is a variable here. And you'll notice that syntax is a little bit different. When we to create some kind of new object, which will be dog.new. There was our dog created in memory, and we can even use its method. We can tell Blue to speak. Woof. So there it is. This is basic this is a basic example. And you'll notice it's not too much. It's we're not doing anything too crazy. But you can probably notice how tedious this might get. If we happen to close out of Interactive Ruby, we will lose all of the work we just did. There's n so it's not saved anywhere. And if we wanted to create our dog class again, we'd have to type all these things back in. And that can get very tedious if we have some kind of large programming project. So I'm going to show you a different way we can do it that's a little more improved. So I'm going to close out of Interactive Ruby here. And I've already created a Ruby class file right here, dog.rb. rb is the extension for our Ruby files. I'm going to open this up with Notepad++. And you'll notice here that it's basically the same thing that I typed into Interactive Ruby, but we have this number symbol and a couple of words here that define basically what I'm going to do. Anything after the number symbol is our comment. So these are just comments. They're not run in the program at all. And if we open up our command prompt, cmd, we can navigate to the desktop where this file is located. And we can use Ruby's interpreter which is nice because Ruby doesn't have to be compiled. We can just go ahead and run our dog program. So there it is. You'll notice that it gave us the same output as our last program. Basically, we created our class, and everything that's after the class is executed. So this is a, a lot more convenient than using interactive Ruby, you can tell, because we, we can actually save our classes and all of our work and we don't have to type it all over again in interactive ruby. So this is a convenient much more much more convenient way of doing things. And you can do it this way if you'd like. 
Sometimes I prefer to do it this way because it's a little more lightweight than an IDE. But for this tutorial, we're going to use an IDE because it's a little more simple for us. Sometimes it's more convenient when we're getting into larger projects. So later down the road, it's going to help us a lot. I'm going to go ahead and close out of the command prompt here. And we're going to go into Eclipse. So I'll open up Eclipse. And I've already created a workspace. You can just use your default one and open that up. Your workspace for Eclipse is basically the store of all of your preferences and projects. You could even save that on your flash drive if you'd like, and you can carry it around anywhere you like, anywhere you want if you're working on more than one workstation. That's one thing that I do a lot when I'm at school or when I'm running back and forth between computers. So here is Eclipse. Here we have the window where we write our code and everything. This is where our projects will show up. And here's the console at the bottom. So you'll see that it has everything for us. We don't have to have two or three windows open. We're just going to go into File, New, Ruby Project. If this isn't here already, just go to Other. Go into under Ruby and open Ruby project and hit next. Now we can give our project a name. We'll just give it dog, just like our last example, and hit finish. And here's our project. It's basically just a folder. It's not much more than that. So in this project, we're going to want to create a Ruby class, kind of like we just viewed on the last example. We can also call it dog. And you'll see here that Eclipse already created the class for us. We didn't even have to type that in. Well, it's not a whole bunch to type in, but that's OK. <laughs> we can still put in our methods here, like speak. Do our put s. And we'll create our blue. That really is a nice dog. We'll tell him to speak. I don't think the neighbors really appreciate it when he speaks, but we enjoy having him. So this is our entire program. You can save that and then run it. We're going to run this as a Ruby script, not as a Ruby test and hit OK. And you'll notice that in the console we got the same thing that we did from our other console. Eclipse just ran this entire program for us. So this is really nice. We have project manage management built in. We have everything that we need, like syntax highlighting. We can write our programs in here. And we have the console as well. So these are some big advantages of the IDE. And this is why we went through that big process of creating the IDE. Now again, don't worry too much about all what all this means. We're going to go over that later on when we get into classes and methods and variables and everything like that. So this is basically our first tutorial in Ruby. Thanks everyone for being here. We hope to see you on the other Ruby programming tutorials here at Ruby Rocks U.